welcome, 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 and thank you for joining me. I'm Joanna Ward, host of On The Move with Joanna Ward, and do we have a fantastic fitness segment for you. We have with us today Coach Gary Brown from Team Octopus Fighting. They fight, they like do MMA, which is mixed martial arts. Of course I'm not the expert, but I have the expert with me. Welcome, welcome, welcome to On Thank The you. Move, Coach nice Brown. To be here. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure and Thank honor you. to meet you. Thank you very 73 much. 73 years old, looking like you were 27. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. It's just, you told me you kind of eat what you want to eat and do what you want to yeah, do. Yeah, pretty much, but I, I've never <laughs> smoked, I never drank. Um, I spent 18 months in Vietnam, came home, and I kick, kick continue with my martial arts, my physical fitness. So as long as I'm doing my physical fitness, then I mean, I feel good. You feel good at 73. Yeah. And so you're, you're still active every day, and yes. you, you have Team Octopus. Tell us a little bit about how you I, got I don't have it. I, I train there. You train there? I, I, I okay. teach classes You there. teach classes. Oh, so you're an instructor there. Yes. So how did you get into mixed martial arts after coming out of the military? Uh, well, I was in martial arts long before then. Mm -hmm. I started boxing in 1951. Mm -hmm. I started martial arts in 1954. Uh, in a children's home mm -hmm. in Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. And you, you say you never smoke? No. And you never drink? No. And and here you are, standing still, physically fit, fighting and t training and coaching. Well, and I praise <laughs> the Lord every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. So. You can't leave that out either. Can't leave it out. So we don't necessarily have to have uh, these mind-altering substances no. to have longevity no. and enjoy life and be physically fit. No. So thank you so much for sharing that with our audience. Now about our older people who probably think that, you know, I just can't do this, I can't do that, I'm too old, I might break a bone, I might injure something. What would you, what kind of advice would you give them? Advice I give them right now would be that if they're my age or even younger, I would say, you know, make sure you get up in the morning time, early in the morning, the mm -hmm. longer you stay in bed, the worse it gets. You oh, know, okay. Get up early in the morning time, as soon as you wake up, get up. Mm -hmm. You know, get up, start moving. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, start getting your day started, mm -hmm. you know, and then always make sure I do the night before that I've got something the next day that I can actually start work on, start doing, mm -hmm. you know, like these guys, you know, <laughs> I work on them, so. Uh, you work on them, so you brought some people with us today. Yes, yeah, so And I'm, who do we have with us today? I have Eric and I have JB. Okay, and, and what is it that they're, they're gonna show our, our, our viewers today? Uh, they're gonna show some parrying drills, mm -hmm. uh, blocking drills, so you get punched in the nose and the mouth. Okay. And uh, the right way. <laughs> And then we're going to show some show some uh, kicks later on and stuff. But the parrying drills in self-defense or in fighting are probably the most important thing because with the parrying drills, you're blocking all the punches, you're blocking the kicks. That way you don't get hurt, but you're also able to go back with some offense if you need it. Mm -hmm. So so if could they use some of this kind of stuff if I was like in the mall and I was trying to get in my car and somebody oh, yes, tried most to definitely. get me, I can just get them up off me? Yeah. Like, you know. Trouble is, is that most people's shins are not conditioned. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to kick somebody's shin to shin, mm -hmm. it's going to oh, hurt. Shin to shin. Yeah, it's going to hurt. What if I just want to kick them? Oh, if you want to kick them, that's, that's <laughs> just awesome. Just kick them, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to step back here with you and watch you guys. And if I just have any questions, I'll just ask you guys. And this is Eric Bullock and this is JB. JB. Awesome sauce. Let's go, guys. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now, we'll have JB throwing some punches at Eric. Uh, Eric, you can go ahead and block, move around a little bit, and uh, take it slow so that people can see how we're blocking the punches, okay? So is Eric blocking now? A little, little harder than that, a little. Eric, you're blocking right now? Yeah, yeah he's pairing and drills. And JB right is the, the person on offense. Yeah, he's oh, on okay. offense, he's on defense. He, offense and defense, okay. Our hands are up. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still blocking. Right. Uh, close your hands a little bit. And this is just sparring drills. Yeah, these are just sparring drills, so you don't get hit. Okay. Yeah, and this we're just blocking and blocking and blocking. And, we're, and working on hand-eye coordination and yes. following the, yes. the the attack. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of times the shoulder is what is what shows you what the next punch is going to be. Oh, okay. The so shoulder it, has to move before the hand starts. Okay. So, so if you can't just punch, you have to move their shoulders, so we'll basically watch them from the, from the, from the nose down to the chest. Nose to the chest, And that okay. tells you which way they're going. Got it. Also, so when this is not a good way to fight right here. Right, no. <laughs> and also when they're punching, they, while you're stepping, mm -hmm. if you're going to throw a kick, you're throwing here. When you go here, mm -hmm. your other weight's here, so now you're able to throw the kick. Okay. So when you move that way, it gets you to show you how to throw the kick. If he steps up here, mm -hmm. then you know there's going to be the left kick. Oh, okay, so I go, I go here with that one, yes. and then here. I got to step. Yes. Back. Okay. Cool. Okay. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to have we have Eric throw at JB. 
mm -hmm. a little faster, a little harder. And what JB was doing, Eric. Yeah. So they're still sparring, but they're getting ready to change offense to defense. Yes. So now JB, you're on defense, and Eric's on offense, and it's gonna go faster. Okay. Let's see a little quicker, a little harder. Don't hurt JB, Eric. <laughs> JB not gonna let you, cause that's why he got his blocks up. He'll block yeah. them all. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Look, I'm hitting back. JB, I thought you were just blocking. Hit, don't get hit, JB. You'll be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> left shoulder forward. Left shoulder, okay. Yeah. Oh, you okay, like that. I can block yeah, that you, with you, that. Yeah, okay. you can't be square on. You, you have can't to be have square left, on. You okay. have to be I, left shoulder forward. Left shoulder forward. If, if I'm right-handed, is it still left shoulder forward? forward? Yeah, okay. your left shoulder's got to be here. If you're south pole, your right shoulder's got to okay, be Okay, so, so JB is using his, his, his forearm and everything, too. Yeah, yeah okay. that's, that's the way I teach. Okay, because that's even a more protective than All just right. my glove. All right, relax. Okay. Now what's going to happen... Perry's going to throw at JB. JB's going to counter behind the punches. Okay. Okay. So, you know, pop, 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 and come back like the drill we do. Okay. And go. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh. No wonder I didn't do this segment. <laughs> I might mess around and get hit. Oh, that's that quick. Oh, so somebody who beat somebody up in the mall that was messing with them and they just dropped real quick, like in their yeah. first 30, they probably messing with somebody to do yeah, MMA. Yeah, because your time, your, 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 your base, your balance, mm -hmm. your coordination is everything. Mm -hmm. That you can't do this without that. So okay. everything's based and balanced. People in the street are not based and balanced. Right. They throw wild punches. Yeah. This would be no problem for JB or for Eric, you know. To, to just hit somebody like and yeah. have them fall in 15 seconds. Good. Because they, they're basing it up and they're just going to send all that energy to. Yeah. And she was having uh, Eric throwing, JB's blocking the hand and coming back, which is oh, he's blocking which is, and coming back. Which okay. Is, he, slow it down, oh. slow it down, slow it down. See, that's walk what us through it, this section right here. Just walk through it real quick. Walk turns, through it. So the camera can see it. Turn. So he's going to he's going to throw and he's going to block and, then and throw back. Throw back, JB. Bump. Oh, see yeah, how he did. Okay. See, most uh. people don't do that. Most people punch, come back. The other person punch. Oh, so with us, like, it's boom, boom, and steady throwing. It's oh, very intimidating. Go ahead, just move a little bit. Mm. Move a step forward there, JB. Oh, snap. Dang, if those were hits, Eric would be taking something to the face, right? Yeah, he would be if, J <laughs> if JB was throwing. Throwing, yeah. Because JB, you say JB fights a little bit. He already does like a, some. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does uh, Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. He was rated uh, number one in the Southeast. Really? Uh, in Muay Thai. JB, you got a girlfriend? Because you rated number one in the ring. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then uh, he's, had, he's never done jujitsu. Mm -hmm. But he had two MMA fights and did extremely well. Did he? Yeah. Okay, and he's ranked number one in the region in... He was, and then he got his shoulder hurt. Mm -hmm. So he had an operation on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. So while he was out, uh, another guy kept... That was that JB already beat. Right. Uh, kept on fighting, so he got JB's number one. So JB right now, instead of doing Muay Thai, he, uh, he wants to start doing MMA. Got it. Okay. Well, my goodness. No wonder I don't do this. Yeah. I just I just start out with now, the girl fight. Now he just he just got blocked. Uh, <laughs> Good job. The same Brad. time this is happening, mm -hmm. it's the same time that in Ty, when JB's blocking and, and and tapping and going, it's the same time he can actually kick. Okay. So we'll go through a small segment of that. A small segment. Quick. Okay. Okay. So this time JB will actually go to the same thing, tip and go, tip go with your kicks as well. Tip go. Okay. Oh, he's just tipping. Oh, Go snap. ahead and pair the punches first. Oh, man. So is that is that's the same thing we just add and kick into it? Huh? It's the same thing we just add and kick into it? Now, yeah. what is this technique yeah, this called is, all together? This is Muay Thai. Muay Thai, okay. This is where you start adding the whole thing together. And this is what Eric likes the most? Uh, yeah. For the most part. He, he all, right, like all right, relax. <laughs> now, we'll reverse this. You'll parry and you'll throw the kicks. <sighs> Deep breath. Parry the shots. And, and this isn't based on judge. Is, is, when they do this competitively, do they, are they judges or do they just go by hits or? No, there's judges. There's and judges say who yeah, won based on hits? There's three judges around the cage, around the, around the ring. Okay. There's three judges that determine the, the kicks get the higher points. Mm -hmm. Oh, they do? Yeah, the kicks get the higher points. The knee shots, the knees to the body get, get 
like second highest points, mm -hmm. and then punches come next. Okay. Uh, and, you know, for the high, for the next highest points. So you have to. Um you have to not just know how to fight and hit and kick, but you also have to have to know how to defend yourself from yes. and, and predict. Is, is it predicated? Like it's predicted? Like I can I can kind of tell based on his body movement stance, the type of kick that he's getting ready to hit yes. with next. Okay. All right, all right, stop just for a few minutes. I want you, Eric, to go ahead and do the same thing. Except I want you to split his hands, come in and tie up. Are y'all good with that? So yeah. so let me ask you something. Why does Eric have on those things and he don't have on any of them? Well, because he didn't bring any. <laughs> uh, <laughs> JB, you don't need that because your shins are higher. You don't need no. Yeah, my shins are conditioned. So. His shins are conditioned. He, 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 he can kick shin to shin with people. I need to work on some conditioning for my shins. <laughs> he, yeah, he can, he can kick shin to shin with he people. He can? Bone to bone. Yeah. Great shots. So, yeah. Same thing. I just have a fit when I kick the tiny room table. I mean, and I'm just like... he's got a wide upper body, but I think he's got like a, a woman's waist, 28 inch waist really? or something, you know, so. So he just built up like that. You got a girl. I actually have a girlfriend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Right, let's go. <laughs> we got a few more minutes. <laughs> okay. So eventually you want to get in, tie up with him. This is another thing we call tie up. Okay. So is JB throwing at me this time? Or? Yeah, you're tying up with him. Okay. Knee. Oh. Knee. So, so, Knee. It, so JB's using his um, forearms to block yes. that from yeah. messing up his ribs? Yeah, well... Uh, Eric's throwing out here. Mm -hmm. He's not throwing to the center. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll show you how the defense against that. Now, Jay, uh, Eric's going to tie up with him. Okay. And as he ties up with him, uh -huh. uh, turn this way. Now, JB's going to walk him backwards. He can't, no, you're supposed to be throwing knees as, he, okay. as he's walking backwards. All right. All right, oh, and so that makes it harder for Eric to. Yeah, it makes it hard for Eric. To. And besides, people are not tying up as far as he is. People. Fighters tie up this way here. Mm -hmm. They tie up here tight. Uh -huh. but so as, what does JB do at that point? As, well, he's got his hands up here on my on my on PLC two. Mm -hmm. PLC two means point of contact. That's no, one. That's two, and that's three. Okay. So when I'm here, if I throw a left knee, he pulls my elbow in. Mm -hmm. That way, I can't throw the knee. Got it. If, okay. if I bring this knee, he pulls that elbow in. I can't throw the knee. Got it. If I bring a knee, he walks me backwards. I can't throw. I can't. I can't keep walking. Me. I can't throw a knee. Because you push, he's got to, you got to use your legs to right. go back or you're going to fall back. So if I'm moving him backwards, mm -hmm. then I can throw the knees. Mm -hmm. But as long as he's moving me backwards, then so he, that way, he can't it, throw it, the it takes a lot to, be, to yeah. be strong. Yeah, so if I throw a knee, he moves me backwards, I'll lean back, then he's not coming up. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. JB, I know you have on gloves, but I wanted to <laughs> just thank you, Eric. Thank you so much, Coach Brown. You are thank awesome, you. awesome, thank awesome. Thank you. So you guys, um, Coach Brown, these guys are you guys are at Team Octopus, which is located Sandy there are three Springs. Sandy Springs and Midtown, Midtown and Shambly is the and other Shambly. Location. And I believe that you guys can get a free pass for a day or a week or something like that just by checking them out. Um, they are at Sandy Springs mostly. Yeah. And um, we're getting ready to go to a break where we're going to have an opportunity to talk about Eric to Eric at one on one. And again, if you want to find any of these guys, remember he has a 28 inch waist and he's like, <laughs> the region. But um, I, I want to thank you guys for looking and MMA might be one of those things you want to add to your fitness. You guys go take a break if you participated with them and we'll be right back with Eric Bullock. He's going to be talking to you guys about how to lose some quick weight quick. Take a break and we'll be right back. Well, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I know at this point that you feel more familiar with mixed mar martial arts. Is that right, Eric? Yes. <laughs> welcome back. Me and Eric have cleaned up, and now we're going to tell you a little bit more about his story, his pathway to self-discipline, and getting involved in mixed martial arts. So, Eric, you look amazing Thank when you're you. in your physical fighting outfit, but even better now in your nice, beautiful, new crisp clothes. So Eric, let's start be before you got into the mixed martial arts. Let's talk about some of the lifestyle changes you told me you just made. And these are serious lifestyle changes that I think, you know, a lot of people struggle with today. And um, pretty much just trying to clean up the way I was eating without getting on a crazy diet because I don't they don't uh, pan out very well for me. So um, I just kind of paid attention to what I was uh, eating, like portion size, mm -hmm. and um, trying not to eat uh, 
huge amounts throughout the day and kind of stay away from the snacks and stuff. So you, you had gotten up to how much past your, because looking at you, you would never think that you would ever overweight. Right. Like it's so hard to, to see that. Um, I was around 225, 230, uh, and it was all in this, this area right here. I'd, I like to call it skinny fat. Right, right, and, and what happened? Um, basically, it kind of got hard for me to put uh, put my pants on anymore. Mm -hmm. It was hard to button them. Um, I was having to use that belt uh, to hold my pants up, and I kind of got uh, kind of got tired of it. And you said one of your was it a coworker or someone that said something to you? And yeah, yeah somebody said some something to me not too long ago about my um, had a little bit of fat hanging over my uh, my my belt line there. Mm -hmm. wasn't too happy with that. <laughs> And something inside of you, because I, I think everybody kind of has that, here I come, here I come, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be that, that bulge over your belt, and they just kind of let it happen because they just feel like it's um, a part of life. But your personality, you saw it and then you took action. Um, tell us a little bit more how, how that mindset works and how we can, even if we, if we don't have that particular personality right now, how we can probably maybe take, take some steps towards here I come, here I come, I'm gonna be that bell to the bell. How do I pull back? Um, it's kind of hard for me as I'm, I'm one of those um, all or nothing type people. Mm -hmm. So um, I, can, I can take time off of the gym and I start to get into a, a little bit of a lazy attitude um, and then it translates into work as well. Mm -hmm. And that's usually where I start seeing it as mm -hmm. um, my work starts uh, you know, declining. I'm not as engaged in meetings. Um, and normally I'm that type, type of person that is uh, really on point, mm -hmm. um, driving meetings, driving um, process change and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that's where I notice it. And then um, I, can, I get myself back in the gym and it immediately picks back up. I, you know, I'm, I'm way sharper at work, um, and I, I know what I'm doing, and I can, I can kind of lead better. Mm -hmm. So that initial, what was it, 25, 20, 30 pounds? Yes. That you, did you tumbled into because somebody said something to you, and you said to yourself, like, I can't. So were you hardcore then? You, you stayed at that for about a year, right? Um, I. I started doing some boot camp classes uh, mm -hmm. just to find a, a gym home, basically. Uh, I found if it's not convenient for me, then I'm not gonna go, so, uh, and I needed some a place that was open early in the morning and had showers, kind of, so I could get, get in there and get there before I went to work, so. Kind of started doing boot camp classes mm -hmm. um, to get that cardio ba built back up. Mm -hmm. Um, that I had lost from not doing like, hardcore exercises. I started doing some cardio kickboxing classes and it just got to, to the point of where um, punching the bag, kicking the bag wasn't enough for me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it, I mean, it got my endurance built up. I lost the vast majority of that weight doing the uh, cardio kickboxing classes, but it just got to the point of where I need more. Right. Um, and at that point in time, one of the instructors, uh, you know, they noticed that I was keeping up with the, the different exercises and I, I tuned myself into a, a training more than the average person, I think. Like, mm -hmm. um, I really start to, you know, why are we doing this? What, what's the purpose in this? Mm -hmm. Is it leading to something else? And um, he kind of motivated me to uh, start something else. So I um, started doing some Muay Thai classes. Mm -hmm. um, they were early in the morning as well, so it really played out um, good for me. Um, my coach, uh, we had maybe two to three people in that class, so mm. I was really getting a, close to a one-on-one -on -one focus at that time. And uh, it progressed rapidly from there, um, and I really think it was because I had that close attention at that time. Mm. And, um, he really pre he presses us hard. He's kind of a a legend in the Atlanta martial arts scene. And, and what's uh, his name? Uh, Coach Gary Brown. Oh, okay. Um, and what's the name of his um, facility? The, the gym we are currently at is called Team Octopus Sandy oh, Springs. nice. Um, and I've been with him for about four years now. Okay. Team Octopus, Octagon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, Tentacles. The, the eight limbs. Right, right, right. Is there, is there a motto or 
statement right. goes out eight limbs. No, we don't have early. any of, any of those. It's just get in there and kick it and beat That's it and right. get it together. Yep. And, and you said that this is so important because so many people say, well, Julian, I'm just too tired to work out. I'm frustrated. I got this at the work. But you're saying that, hey, this, this can be the balancing that you need to keep the other stuff going. So in the mornings, I don't really have issue with it. Mm -hmm. um, when I talk about convenience to work and home, I actually am closer to work and home now. Uh, we moved a whole lot closer to the Sandy Springs area. Mm -hmm. And I really, that's probably the most important part of, you know, getting into a gym and getting into a routine is making mm -hmm. sure it's convenient for you. Right. So um, I'm, I get up at around 5.30 mm -hmm. uh, in the morning. I had to do, uh, do jujitsu class in the mornings. Um, and I usually do that about three to four times a week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I'll hit the, the um, lazy button and um, I won't go on Mondays. Yeah. I, I, did, I um, have been pretty regular over the past few months though, but um, I'll do that in the mornings. Mm -hmm. um, and the motivation's not that hard in the morning. It's, uh, I, I can really see the, the fruits of my labor throughout the day mm -hmm. uh, when I do hit class in the morning. Now, on the flip side of that, there is no Muay Thai class in the morning, um, and there hasn't been for some time. So okay. there's my motivation factor. Um, after working from, I typically work from 8.30ish uh, until about 6.30ish <laughs> every okay. day. Okay. Uh, I don't take a lunch, so I'm, I'm at it all day long, and I'm kind of ready to go home. Uh, but. Muay Thai class is at night, so. Uh, you have to go to yeah, the your class. Yeah, so um, it has been harder for me to hit that, um, even though that has been my consistent thing over the past four years. Um, I have been in Muay Thai for these four years. I recently picked up the Jiu Jitsu again after not doing it for about 10 years. Um, so I kind of have to get myself built up and motivated to hit Muay Thai in the afternoon or evening at that point in time. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, that's the, where I really feel the effects of the, the cardio and where um, I kind of work it out of myself where I'm kind of run down at the uh, end of the night. Right. The jujitsu in the morning is what I feel it gets my mind going. Mm -hmm. Um, I've noticed that since doing the uh, jujitsu classes in the morning that it, it makes my mind sharper throughout the day. Um, it's uh, with the ground fighting and the grappling, you're doing a lot of um, slow movements. Um, when we, you know, we call it live rolling, that's when you're actually doing the grappling portion of it um, at full speed. Uh, yeah, you, you are using strength and speed at that time, but there's a lot of um, technical aspects of it where you are using your mind and thinking about, okay, what's the next move I need to make here? You can slow it down by mm -hmm. just putting your weight on somebody and you know, holding them in a certain spot. Right. But um, I notice that it gets my mind going and it gets me in the right frame of mind mm -hmm. uh, for work throughout the day. That's that body-brain challenge that we talk about. Yeah. Um, and so you get that in one workout. Now, can that can those particular arts be used in self-defense mechanisms? Do you feel a lot more confident about whether somebody's going to come grab you from your car and you're going to be able to beat them down? Or Definitely. Um, <laughs> definitely. So um, in jiu-jitsu, I, I would say it's, uh, there's a lot of practical applications for mm -hmm. it. And, um, you know, I, I really like to, you know, speak to that with it being um, with smaller people, um, even mm -hmm. even females find success in it mm -hmm. um, because you don't have to use a lot of strength um, and weight to control someone. It's a lot about, um, you know, um, holds. Uh, there's a lot of choke holds. There's a lot of, um, you know, arm locks, leg locks, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And uh, a lot of it, you know, you're grabbing a hold of someone's uh, clothing. We train in a gi. It's kind of there to remind you that, you know, you are clothed out on the street. And um, I, I don't know if you remember or not, but that's basically what made jujitsu more popular in the U.S. was mm -hmm. the early on UFC with your little... Um, Hoist Gracie, he was the the, the little jujitsu guy that came in there and beat all the, the big uh, burly uh, boxers right. and yeah. uh, kickboxers mm -hmm. and uh, those guys. So it, it is very applicable to daily life. And self-defense. Self Definitely. Awesome sauce. So thinking about, you said you skipped lunch. I know you told me that you have tapped into that intermediate fasting 
that is a trending now for those who know about it. Tell us a little bit about that with a few minutes we have left. So um, I, I've kind of started that. Uh, I noticed a lot of people talking about it and mm -hmm. I, the, the main reason why I started doing it was because most people talk about the, the um, how it makes you more sharp, uh, your mind more sharp throughout mm -hmm. the day. Right. And um, I, I noticed that um, you know, around noonish, oneish, um, even if when I was eating breakfast on a regular basis, that I, you know, I was kind of, it was kind of dipping down. Um, so I, I mainly started it for that reason, and I really felt like I wasn't eating that much in the morning anyway. So to be honest, I don't hold myself 100% uh, accountable to what they, they typically do. One of the methods is to stop eating at uh, 8, 8 p.m. and mm -hmm. not eat until the next day at noon. So um, because of my gym schedule, uh, I'm usually not out of the gym until around 7.30, 7.45 and not getting home until 8. Mm -hmm. I'm, I am going to eat a meal. Uh, and <laughs> You're not going to just wait until 12 the no, next day? No, no, no. Especially no. on those days. Right. But I, I just make sure... The, the thing with me is I make sure that I'm not eating a ton of food right before I go to bed. Right. You know, it's, it's I, keep, I keep it really basic mm -hmm. for, most, for the most part, um, you know, a small portion of meat, you know, the, you know, the typical nutritionist uh, advises, you know, like the fist size or what would fit in your palm. Right. Um, sweet potatoes, vegetables, you know, salad, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's okay if you drink water, drink some coffee in the morning, yeah. and that's basically what I've been doing. Now I'll stray away from it at on the weekends, mm -hmm. and I'll have some um, eggs and spinach basically for breakfast, but um, I really don't go outside of that. Well, Eric, thank you so much for your demonstration doing fitness and coming to visit us. You guys have heard from a pro just about. I hope you guys take up more than just walking and working out. Try some MMA. You've been on the move with Joanna Ward and Eric Bullock, and I'll see you guys next time.